All right, guys, this is the first lesson that I'm going to teach to you from the video format while I'm uh, out on surgery recovery. So I need you to do a great job of taking good notes, just like I was here, and uh, using those notes in order to help you with your homework assignment, working diligently on those assignments so that nobody's behind when I get back from um, recovering from the hernia surgery. Um, it should be Monday today. And we're looking at piecewise functions. And so if you would, you've got to should get a new packet and get that out. Take a look at those right now. At the top, you want to go ahead and get in the definition for a piecewise function. It's made up of two or more functions. Each of those pieces has its own domain. What do I mean by domain? Remember, domain is the X's, right? And so when we say domain, we're talking about what X's go where. Remember, domain before range, D before R, X before Y. So it's important when you look at a piecewise function, here's a piecewise function right here, that you're paying attention to these statements first. Okay, they're the domain statements. They're telling you which x's go into which part of this piecewise function. So when you see an x that is less than, remember the mouth eats the biggest portion, right? So this is saying that negative 2 is bigger than all the x's, all right? So any x that's less than negative 2, you're going to use the first rule to calculate an output or a y value. So if I say f of negative 10, and you see a negative 10 in the x position, you're going to use this first rule because you looked at these domain statements first. And you're like, hey, is negative 10 less than negative 2, or is negative 10 greater than negative 2? Don't forget, the, the further you go to the left is, is smaller, right? So negative 10 is less than negative 2. Okay? So... Pay attention to those domain statements and then make a decision about what part of the function the individual value gets put in at. We have three things here. We got f of negative 5 right there. We got f of negative 2 right there. And we have f of 7. Okay? You can almost think like this is f of x and this is g of x, but they have the same name. We use the domain to decide where we put the numbers into the inputs. So when I look at negative 5, I have to ask myself, I know you all said it, hmm, self, is negative 5 less than negative 2? Or, as if it is, we'd use that rule, or is negative 5 greater than negative 2? Well, I don't think that's right. Negative 5 is further to the left on the number line. Those are smaller values. So I'm not going to use this rule right now. Okay? Negative 5 is less than negative 2. So it's the x squared minus 1 rule that we will use to put the negative 5 in and do our calculations with. We'll square the negative 5. Negative times negative is a positive 25, then we'll subtract 1 for 24. Okay? Now, next one. Let's go back. As we look at the next one, it says f of negative 2. Wait a minute. Negative 2 is not less than negative 2. Negative 2 is greater than or equal to. See the equal right there? That means I'm going to use the bottom rule in order to calculate it. Sorry, Mrs. A get, get, had a phone call. I had to pause for a minute, but I believe we were talking about negative 2, the x value, and comparing it to negative 2, but it's not less. It's greater than or equal to. Let's get that out of there so we can see a little more clearly. See the equal to right there? That means if I put negative 2 right here, it's a true statement. Negative 2 is equal to negative 2. So that tells me when I go to do this evaluation, 
I'm using the 5x plus 3 rule right here. So that's where you see in this example, negative 2 goes in for the x in the bottom rule, not the top rule. It didn't go into both. And we multiplied 5 by negative 2. We add 3. You get negative 10 from the 5 times negative 2. Add the 3. You take the difference. You get negative 7. So those two x values satisfied completely different statements here, and we use completely different parts of the piece. See that piecewise? There are multiple pieces here. We use different pieces to calculate the outputs. Let's look at this one here on C. It says find f of 7. Well, clearly, 7 is not less than negative 2. 7 is greater than negative 2. So we're definitely using rule 2, 5x plus 3, in order to calculate the input of 7 and get an output. 5 times 7 was 35. 35 plus 3 is 38. So in order to do those evaluations, it means find the value when x is 7, find the value when x is negative 2, find the value when x is negative 5. We have to look here in the domain rules first. You have to be here to make your decision about, you can't just start plugging in X every place you see it. That's not going to work. You have to plug in your X here and here to test which of these is true, which domain is my X value in, and then use the rule that corresponds to that. Okay? All right, let's look at some other stuff. Down here, we have a more complicated multiple piece, piecewise function. When we look at this piecewise function, we're talking about not just one rule for domain, not just two, but three. And then there are three different ways to calculate outputs. All right? If x is between negative 4 and 1, you'll use the middle rule. If x is less than negative 4, you'll use the first rule. If x is bigger than or equal to 1, you'll use the third rule. Hopefully that makes sense. All right? So when I look on my paper here and it says g of 2, maybe just stop for a second, lean to the person next to you, and see which one of those rules, when x is 2, Which of these rules do you think? So we use the first rule, the second rule, or the third rule? All right. Hopefully that conversation led you to talking to each other about, hey, is 2 less than negative 4? No. Is 2 between negative 4 and 1? No. Is 2 greater than or equal to 1? Yep, that's the rule. I'm going to use in order to do that one. So I will use 2x squared plus 9 to evaluate g of 2. Okay? Let's do the same thing with these other ones. Here's negative 1. The x value is negative 1. I think negative 1 is between negative 4 and 1. Notice how I'm looking in these domain expressions first. Negative 4 to 1, hey, yeah, negative 1 fits right there between them. That means I'm going to use this rule to calculate the negative 1 value. Okay? Let's try one more before we actually look at the calculations and just make a decision about which, which piece to use. I'm going to use the top one, the middle one, or the bottom one. Well, my x value is negative 6. Is negative 6 less than negative 4? Yes, it is. I can't be in different rules, so I'll know that on that one, let me use a different color there, on that one, I will use the rule at the top when I put in my negative 6. Why don't you follow that, put in 2, Cubit, multiply by 2 and add 9. Then take the negative 1 and put it in. And, and take the negative x minus 1 and calculate that. 
and then take the negative six, take half of it, add three, and get the value for C. Pause for just a minute. I'll give you about 20 seconds here in order to calculate those values now. Be working on G of two. Make sure you got that one. Now be working on G of one, negative one, I mean. It's in the middle rule because that's where that comes from. That should be simple. Now do G of negative six. Plug it in the top rule because negative six is less than negative four. All right. Let's see how we did. If you guys need to pause the recording and talk about how those simplifications happened, you can, but let's check. You put into into the rule that made an x bigger than negative 1, you cubed the 2. When you cubed 2, you got 8. Then you multiply before you add, and 2 times 8 gave you 16. 16 plus 9 is 25. Okay? In the middle one, B here, G of negative 1. Negative 1 actually goes in the middle rule because it's between negative 4 and 1. Make that decision. Change the sign of negative 1 for positive 1 and bring down the negative 1. 1 and negative 1 make 0. On the last rule, G of set, negative 6, that's where we went to the top because our negative 6 is less than or equal to negative 4. That's what led us to the top rule up there. And so now that we have that, we are taking half of negative 6, which is negative 3. I don't even have to have been good at fractions to do that one. But you could take half of negative 6 on your calculator if you had to. Then you're going to add the 3 to the negative 3 and get 0. Hopefully those make good sense. Okay? Do me a favor, come on over to homework number three right now, or unit three, homework one right now, and find that in your packet. It's a few pages back. Labeled homework one. And there are literally six problems. So right now, I want you to do one through six on homework one. You can pause the video. Why are you doing those for about, I don't know, those six problems shouldn't take any more than eight to ten minutes. Okay? Eight minutes. Let's just do it. Get them done. I'll check the first two with you after you come back. Remember, when you do number one or number two or any of them, you got to look at this X value. That's what that represents, the zx value. Then you've got to compare it to the domain statements. Is 8 greater than 1? Is 8 between negative 6 and 1? Or is 8 less than 1? I hope you realize that 8 is greater than 1 and that you should use this rule. That's just a brief reminder. Do that now. Pause the video because I'm going to keep recording in order to get your time right. 